Welcome back. We are diving into the world of nested object arrays. It's like opening a set of Russian dolls, with each one unveiling another inside. Let's explore how this concept is used to structure complex data and how we resolve them in DraftBit. Imagine a library. In each category, there are shelves, and on each shelf, there are books. In our data world, a nested object array is similar. It's an array where each element is an object, and these objects can contain more arrays of objects inside them. Here is an example of an object array. Seems a bit messy, right? But let's try a different approach. This is much better. Now it's easier to see what's inside. Our library has two sections. Each section has a category and some books. There are two books in each section, each book listed by its title and author. Now let's go back to first view. Let's begin with the smallest part. Each book has a title and an author, making it an object because it has two details. These books are grouped together in a list, which we call an array. Because this list contains objects, we call it an object array. Each list of books also has a category, making the whole thing an object again. And at the highest level, we have a big list that holds all these objects, so it's also an object array. Now let's see how we can easily work with this setup in DraftBit. Now we are in the Builder. We are going to use the same library data we analyzed together. But not that most of the time, this data might come from an API, but for now, we've got it saved as a global variable. When dealing with lists of data, DraftBit's list component is super handy. It lets us loop through each item in our list, giving us the power to tweak and use the data however we like. Now our library data isn't just a simple list, it's a bit more complicated with lists and side lists. We can handle this by using multiple list components in the builder. Let's start by adding our first list component. We're going to show our main categories like fiction or nonfiction. We need to nest a text component underneath. I'm setting up the data source for this list component right now. It will be our global variable library. To see what our data looks like behind the scenes, we can add a console log. Now we've got our top level items ready. First up, let's get those category names showing. We pick the text component and in the data tab, we create a temporary variable to grab the category name. You'll see all bits of data we can use listed under list item section in the drop down menu. There you have it. What if we want to show off the book titles? Time for another list component. We place the second list right inside the first one. And let's add another text component underneath. In our list component, this time our data source is the books array because we want to dive into that. By setting up like this, we make the book details available only because we used a nested list. Let's pop a console log to peek at the book properties. Yep, we can see the items listed in a the console. Then in a new text component, we set up another variable. And from the drop down, we can now pick out properties like books, title, author. Let's choose the title. And there you have it. That's how you tackle nested object arrays in DraftBit, breaking down complex data structures into something we can display and interact with in our app.